So, Sean, you'll like this. There is a beached whale right across the street from me. A whale. A real whale. Like, right across the street. I'm going to go see it after this. Nice. Right? Yeah. What do you think it'll smell like? Death. What's happening, everybody? Happy Wednesday. It's your boy, Chicago Sean. Sean McLaughlin joined with my friend, Steve Straza. The all-star charts head technical now analyst. What's happening, Steve? What's up, man? Quite nice, uh, nice quiet day in the markets, right? Nothing really going on. Just you know, just chilling, right? Yeah, if you want to call it that. <laughs> uh, I mean, no. Listen, we've joked like things are getting exciting out here. Uh, things are getting fun. We had a- if, if this is your brand of excitement, then there's definitely lots of excitement out there for you. If if you're somebody who's passionate about the markets. You should be having a good time for this. And we were just talking about it offline. If this was five, six, seven years ago, I would have been over trading. I would have had too much exposure. I'd probably be miserable right now. I wouldn't want to look at my account. I wouldn't want to look at the charts. If you're doing things right and you're managing your risk responsibly, uh, you've shrunken down your exposure, probably in a lot of cash right now, and you can sit back and just observe this. Uh, And to be a spectator for when markets get crazy like this, you can learn a ton. Uh, And I think that's something for my process that by fixing my trading um, and getting smaller in times like these, I've now, you know, gained a lot of experience from being able to participate during these times in a different way where I could really just see things clearly. No, this is so important, Straza, because look, there is a temptation when the markets get crazy like this. Yeah. If, if you're not already overexposed and you're and you're not getting hurt, then the okay. temptation is. Oh man, there's some opportunities here. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna I'm gonna be a hero. I'm gonna put some hero trades on, and I'm gonna get on Twitter and and brag about it to all my friends when I make all this money. There's a very good temptation out there, but man, it, when markets are kind of dislocating the way they are right now, yeah. I mean, the best trade on the books right now is just to go for a walk. Seriously. And it, which is what I just did. If you see me on Twitter, I just got back. I went for a little walk along the river, took my dog out. Beautiful. I mean, that's the best trade I could have done today. No, I love that. I mean, what else? And that's what I've learned over the years, too. I used to, um, when I traded a lot more and was doing less research, I would go golfing or go fishing on a day like today. Now, I kind of love being at my desk uh, during days like today. You know, I love watching tape reading in times like these. A lot of fun. But I'm doing the same thing as you. I'm going to look at a beached whale across the street from me uh, when we're done here. So for those who don't know, Straza lives in Key West. Tough life down there in Key West. Yes. And uh, the, the big local news out there is there's a beached whale. I think uh, George Costanza reported it. And uh, it's right there, right outside your house, practically. I'll send you a picture. I can't wait. <laughs> anyway. Speaking of beached whales, let's yeah, look right? at some of these breakdowns. <laughs> So you got a, you got a bunch of charts here. Let's let's look at some of these charts. Let's see what we're looking at here. For those of you for those who may not be paying close attention to the market, we're going to get you up to date. So the levels that we were watching, we've been writing about these levels for the past several weeks now. It's the AV WAP from the COVID lows. Why is that important? It tells you you know where the average buyer's uh, cost basis is since the bottom back in 2020. Uh, so for two of the major averages, the Nasdaq 100 and uh, the Russell 2000, so small caps. We've taken out the AV WAP from the COVID lows. What that tells us is that the average buyer is now underwater, losing money, not a good thing. Uh, And we're following through to the downside. I think the next like very natural support level, and this is probably a little bit too conservative. um, (laughs) The way things are going, we'll probably blast right through it uh, by the end of this week. But if you look at the equivalent level in the S&P 500, we haven't taken out that AV WAP yet. So if you anchor a V WAP from the COVID lows in the S&P 500, I think it puts you at about... 385, which is still about 10, 10 points of downside from here. And what do you think accounts for that? You think just all the mega caps that are still kind of, I mean, they're, they're showing signs of weakness, but they're still hanging on up there. Yeah, uh, I think there's less growth in there, right? So uh, large caps outperformed small caps, all else equal, right? And value outperformed growth, all else equal. The S&P has more value, less growth, more large, less small. So we were talking this morning in our morning meeting about how we were kind of laughing that uh-huh. all these levels of support that we thought were levels of support, the market's just ripping through them as if they don't even exist. Yep. Uh, and we're seeing that in a lot of places. I, I'm sure you got a few charts of that to, to show examples of that. So at the index level, it was small cap value that was kind of standing out, uh, kept digging in at the lower bounds of its range. You can see it on the lower pane here. 
But that was the holdout, right? That's what bulls have been pointing to for the past several months now. Hey, look, the range lows are holding in small cap value. Uh, hadn't been the case for small caps in general, Russell 2000, which is on the top pane, and then small cap growth, Russell 2000 growth. So now Russell 2000 value has followed the laggards and has also resolved lower. That's really just a microcosm for what's going on in general. Any tops that have not resolved lower yet are resolving lower. And when we look to the charts and say, hey, this is a logical level, it's getting to the point for me where we've been talking about logical levels for the past several weeks, several months now, maybe they haven't mattered. Uh, so until they start mattering, you know, something like this, key former highs, the 2018 highs in the Russell 2000. Sure, that's a natural level for buyers to kind of step in, see some demand enter the market. But until we start to see that kind of price behavior, I don't think we should count on it because right now, like you said, none of these levels matter. Right. And so we were talking this morning about how that makes it really challenging environment, because as an options trader, when markets get volatile like they are now, my natural instinct is, OK, let's start looking for some premium to sell. Let's start looking for some instruments that are in some well-defined defi ranges, but have high volatility that we could sell. The problem is, is we're not finding well-defined ranges. We're, fi we're finding instruments that are just breaking through levels of support and what we think might be a range has been proven not to be a range time and time again over the last few weeks. So it, it's hard to be out there trying to put on a delta neutral credit spread betting on a range because the ranges aren't holding. Yeah. A, a few weeks ago, even yeah, mid-April, we were in a situation where some tops were failing and reversing higher. And, you know, it looked like, you know, maybe we're going to get a fresh up leg and maybe even break uh, above the upper bounds of the range. Other tops were breaking to the downside, but at least we had that like balance where, you know, you could see a little battle between the bulls and the bears. Oh, maybe this top will fail. Maybe that won't. Um, for now, all these tops are failing. They're all resolving lower. I think you have to err in that direction until, like I said, we see uh, price behavior dictate differently. Right. There's and so next up in our meeting, after, after we all agreed that trying to sell range bound premium is just is a dicey proposition right now the next thing we said was okay well let's 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 find some stocks that look like they might be ready to reverse let's see if we could do some bottom fishing and 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 i wrote about this in the blog post this morning and i said that you know you guys know me bottom fishing is not my forte it's not something i'm ever very comfortable with unless there's a very strong case that could be made with you know strong support levels and you know, really high premium coupled with that, uh, you know, just a, a, a good technical case. But we were looking around this morning, and we're just like, we don't see any. There's nothing that we're really willing to stick our neck out and say, okay, here's a bottom or short term bottom, right? I mean, even these big caps you got up here on the screen now, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon. I mean, these don't look like charts that I wanna be catching knives in right now. And you know what's funny about that? These are some of the strongest stocks, especially right. the top two. That's about as good as it gets right now. Uh, so this is what most stocks are doing here on the bottom, Amazon and Google. And this is what very few are doing. And that's kind of our point. You have to earn the direction that the ones that haven't broken yet are going to follow the rest because the weight of the evidence is just overwhelming uh, at this point. And then, too, when you look at the weakest stocks, like back in April and March, we were testing the pre-COVID highs. Uh, 2018 highs were coming into play. There were a lot of logical levels. When I look at the weakest stocks right now, we've sliced through these levels and in a lot of names or areas, it's the all time lows. That's now the next, you know, logical level of support. So you have a, do you got a chart handy of, uh, of ARC? No, but I have the IPO index, which listen, it looks the same. So I was just talking about this uh, on the call. I mean, this is what ARC looks like. This is ARC right now. So we took out those pre COVID highs and we're in no man's land. It's a mess. So it's not easy to define your risk there. Some other ARK ETFs, uh, the ARK FinTech ETF really stands out. That's making new all-time lows right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, you know, look, people come to us at All Star Options. Uh, they're coming to us for trade ideas, right? That that that's the that's our forte. We like to give you good trade ideas that we feel have good edge, have a good potential for a, a good reward to risk ratio. That's that's our bread and butter. Unfortunately, today, when we were talking about the trade we wanted to put on today, we just could not find a trade that that didn't feel overly risky. It didn't feel like we were risking too much to make too little. Uh, and so, like I said, sometimes the best trade on the board is to go for a walk, which is what I did, what we're doing today. 
you know, we'll keep looking for new ideas. But at, at the end of the day, we need charts to just kind of chill out, maybe form some new bases. We need all the stuff that's being thrown at the market right now to just, you know, take a breather. We need some relative strength to reveal itself in some some different areas. Uh, I mean, maybe energy stocks will once again reassert themselves. I mean, it's totally possible. That's that's a bet I'd be willing to make. Uh, but the charts right now are just are just really, really tricky. And, and it doesn't feel like a good time to put either directional risk on or delta neutral risk. It, at least if you're someone like me who likes to you know, pick my spots and, uh, you know, go when I have the odds in my favor. Now, that said, and I wrote this in the blog post this morning, when markets do get dicey, you know, we talk about how people like to do hero trades in this type of environment. And I'm, I'm certainly, not, certainly not advocating for any hero trades here, but there is opportunity if you're willing to take the heat, right? No trade is going to be easy in this environment. There are profits to be made but none of it's gonna be easy. You have to be comfortable with heat. And the way you combat that is you trade small. Mm -hmm. And so for those of you who are comfortable selling premium, you know, we just launched that paid to play service last week where we're, we're that's what we're doing. We're aggressively selling premium. Uh, it's not for everybody. It's not low risk, but environments like this, if you trade small and you stay on top of your positions and you adjust when necessary, there is opportunity there for you. And JC and I will be talking about that later today. We got a webinar at 5.30 Eastern, uh, not to plug that here, but uh, but we'll be talking about that. And if, if that interests you, hit us up on Twitter. We'll, we'll let you know more about it. Straza, I'm gonna give you the last word. Um, what, what's, what's the rest of your day looking like here? <laughs> what are you watching? I mean, listen, it's a let the dust settle uh, type of environment. At this point, I'm looking to energy because they are still the leaders. Uh, but I really think you want to see the weakest stocks stop cratering. Uh, I think we, I was just talking about the IPO index. It's down like another 8% today. Or no, I'm sorry, ARK FinTech, down like another 8% today. Every single day, these the weakest stocks are just collapsing further and further. That needs to stop before I want to put any capital to work in this market. Well, there you go, Straza. Thanks for that. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Trade small out there. Keep it tight. Manage your risk. If you got open positions on like we do, just stay on top of them. This is this is not the time to just put your head in the sand. Yes, go for walks. I'm bullish on going for walks, but hey, let's just manage our risk and keep it tight. All right, everybody? We'll talk to you again soon. Take care, Straza. Later.